In this video, we're going to outline the different point parameters inside of the point creation toolbar, as well as dive into the points that we've already created and modify some of those point parameters. Specifically, we're going to talk about point identity, default layer, default style, and default name format. To first talk about the different point parameters inside of the point creation toolbar, we need to open the point creation toolbar, which is under the create ground data, points drop down, point creation tools. In the point creation toolbar, on the far right hand side, there is an expanded arrow for more of the point parameters. So inside of these point parameters, these are defaults that we can change to modify how the points are displayed once we create them. If it's already created, these changes will not affect points that are already in the drawing. It's only changes to points that are going to be created in the drawing. We're gonna go down from the top down and talk about these different parameters. So under default layer, you can choose what you want the default layer for your points to be. So the points that we've created already are on V node. If you wanted to change the point layer, then you could hit the ellipses afterwards and then choose the layer that you want to have your points created on moving forward. Underneath default layer is the points creation method um, and different parameters that are associated with how you create the points. So what the local coordinates are gonna be, northing, easting versus easting, northing, or X and Y or Y and X. You have grid coordinates, and it's just gonna flop grid, northing, and easting, either northing, easting, or easting, northing. Same thing with geographic coordinates, latitude, longitude, or longitude, latitude. Uh, when you're creating a point, uh, Civil 3D prompts you for certain entities. Uh, in, when we created our points, it prompted us for the elevation and the description. And the reason for that is because you had a prompt for elevation set as manual in these parameters. And we had a prompt for description set as manual. We had a none for point names. That's why we were never asked for a point name when we created our original points. Um, inside of this, you can have an automatic creation or a none selection. Um, we'll go into what an automatic creation would do in another parameter further down on the list. So after you have your prompts, you have your defaults for your prompts, which are default elevation was set as zero. So when we select to create a point and it prompts us for an elevation, then the default elevation that it's gonna give us an option for is zero. Our default description, we don't have anything put in and that's why we had to uh, choose calc and then it retains what your last description was or what your last parameter was. Uh, moving down from there, we have match on description parameters. Inside of a description, you can have certain parameters that are spaced out. Uh, after your initial description, you have your first parameter, your second parameter, and so on and so forth. If you have it set to true, uh, then inside of description key sets, which we haven't discussed yet, but we will later in depth, you can have different parameters control how your points scale or how they're displayed. Um, and this will choose whether or not you can match those description parameters or whether you choose to ignore those. And if you choose to ignore them, you'd set it to false. Disabling description keys. If you want to force some of the selections that we have down below, you would set your disabled descriptions keys set to true, and it would ignore any description keys that we have inside of this drawing. We haven't talked about description keys yet, but we will in future videos. So for now, we're gonna leave it as false. Uh, and then echo coordinates to the command line. After you create a point, you will see those coordinates, northings and eastings, or whatever you have set as your local grid or geographic coordinates will show up inside of the command line up here. So moving on from here, we have our default style. So if you had set your disabled description keys to true, then when you create a point, then it would accept its point style and point label style. In here, these are set as grayed out, and that's because we have this set to false. If we had this set to true, you'll notice these become ungrayed and you can choose them. Moving down from there, we have our default name format. Since we had under the points creation method prompt for point name is none, it ignored our point names. If we had chose automatic, then it would come down here and it would use these point name templates for how to create the name for those points. And you can go in here and you can modify these and choose what you want the name to be. And you can also set the counter starting numbers and increment values. Um, and then from there, 
you have your point identity. And your point identity is inside of these points. If you look at the set point, the point number over here is the point identity. And so what we have here is the point identity is telling us what the next point number is that we're going to create. So if we created a point, that point would be created as point number five. Uh, you can choose to use sequential numbering. If you set it to false, then every time you create a point, it's going to ask you for what point number you want to use. If you leave it as true, it will use this point number offset to choose what the next point number is going to be. So if we create a point five, then the point number offset of one will say that the next point after five should be six. You can also do sequencing numbers from set number points. And if point numbers are supplied, say you were doing a, an import, then it'll choose to use those numbers that are supplied. You can force names or you can, so you can leave it as false and not force names, or you can set it to true and force names based on the imports. If point numbers already exist, what will happen? It will notify you, it will renumber them, it will merge the points or it will overwrite points. Um, same thing if point names already exist, it will notify you, it'll use a name template or it'll use a counter. And then if point numbers need to be assigned, then it will use the next point number or it will sequence from, and that's when you use your sequence point numbers. When we created our points, we didn't set any of these parameters. So uh, I know that I wanna change these point parameters. I would have preferred to start my point identities because these are calc points. I don't wanna have them on the low numbers that would come in from a survey. I wanna set them on a higher number that's something that I'm not gonna have overwritten when I do a survey import. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna jump into these points and I'm gonna edit them. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna right click on the point and I'm gonna click on edit points. And inside of this panorama window, you'll see we have our point identity, which is the number. We have our eastings, our northings, our elevations, our names, and our raw descriptions which are all things that can be set when you're creating the points or can be forced from your point parameters. Same thing with style and point label style. We had it set as use description key sets, so it did not force a style or a point label style. And then we have our point layer. Uh, so I'm gonna jump back over to the left-hand side for our point numbers. I wanna have my points be one through four, actually be 3001 through 3004. So I'm gonna go ahead and select one and click on it and change it to 3001 and do that for the rest of the points.